I saw the devil begins by showing a woman named Ju Yong, who is trapped in the middle of nowhere. For some reason, her car broke down on a cold snowy night, making her have to wait for a tow truck to continue her journey. So, while waiting for the tow truck to arrive, she calls her fiancé, Su Hyun, who works for the National Intelligence Service, to tell him about her situation. But in the middle of their conversation, a stranger approaches Ju Yong's car, and in a friendly tone, offers to help her fix her car. She politely declined his offer, especially considering she was on a very quiet street, and the stranger could be dangerous. The man was not pushy. As soon as Ju Yong refuses his help, he immediately leaves and returns to his car. However, not long after, the man quietly came back to her car with a hammer, which he used to smash the car window until it shattered. Then, he bursts into the car and hits Ju Yong on the head repeatedly with the same hammer until she faints. After that, the man took her to a slaughterhouse which was also his residence. The man's name is Kyung Chol, and he's definitely not a random criminal. He is a psychopath who likes to target young women to kill and mutilate, and his target this time is Su Hyun, who happens to be in the wrong place and at the wrong time. Su Hyun herself is well aware that there is no hope for her anymore, but she still begs him to spare her life since she is currently pregnant. Does Kyung Chol care about the fact that she is pregnant? Of course not. And so, with a cold expression on his face, he raised his hammer high and hit her on the head, killing her on the spot. With Ju Yong dead, Kyung Chol then proceeds to dismember her body, and in the process, her engagement ring falls into the sewer. But he ignores that and continues his work. A few days later, three small children were seen playing under a bridge, where not far from there, one of them found a mysterious plastic bag. Intrigued, the boy then opened the plastic bag, and to his horror, he found a piece of a human ear inside, an ear that belongs to Ju Yong. The horrific discovery immediately made a scene. Later that night, the police fill the area around the bridge looking for Ju Yong's remains. Squad Chief Jung, who is Ju Yong's father, is also present at the crime scene, and now he's afraid the corpse they're looking for is Ju Yong, because after all, she's been missing for the past few days. After a long search, one of the police officers finally found a suspicious object at the bottom of a shallow river. So, using a stick, he tried to invert the object to make it easier for him to check. And sure enough, the object is none other than Ju Yong's head. With a voice shaking with fear, the policeman then shouted to tell all the police about the head he had just found. But his screams were also heard by journalists and local residents who gathered at the scene, causing a stir at the location. And it is at this moment that Su Hyun arrives at the scene. As if it couldn't get any worse, a forensics member who was carrying a cardboard box containing Ju Yong's head accidentally fell, sending the head rolling out right in front of Su Hyun and squad chief Jung, who were immediately struck by the gruesome sight. On the day of Ju Yong's cremation, Su Hyun couldn't hold back his tears. His heart was so broken with sadness, but his sadness was nothing compared to the anger he felt. He vows to find the man who viciously killed his fiancée, and then he will give them the unimaginable, far more terrible pain before killing them. And so, the next day, Su Hyun asks his boss for two weeks of leave, arguing that he needs a break. His boss grants his wish, unaware that Su Hyun will use the two weeks to get revenge. With that, Su Hyun begins preparing everything he needs for his revenge plan. First, he asked a co-worker to retrieve a capsule-shaped tracking device from the NIS equipment. And then, he researched the profiles of the four suspects given by squad chief Jung. Just like Su Hyun, Jung also wants the perpetrators of his daughter's murder to receive severe punishment, a punishment that cannot be given by legal means. To that end, he secretly cooperates with Su Hyun behind the cops, asking him to find the criminal. And so, the night Su Hyun kicks into action, he went to the apartment of one of the suspects beat him badly, and tied him to a chair. Then he shows him photos of Ju Yong and her car before questioning him to determine if the man is really the killer. But the man is completely clueless about Ju Yong's murder, and that really upsets him. So, to vent his anger, Su Hyun took a wrench and used it to hit the man's vital area. The search for the killer continues the next day, and it so happens that the second suspect is riding a motorbike when Su Hyun finds him. Without further ado, Su Hyun stepped on the gas and hit the man causing him to fall off his motorbike. He then got out of the car, tortured the man, and interrogated him in the middle of the road. But then again, the man is not the person he is looking for. Su Hyun then returns home, feeling exhausted and frustrated. But the search won't last long, as the third suspect is none other than Kyung Chol. Meanwhile, Kyung Chol has yet to launch another heinous act. This time, targeting a woman waiting for a bus at an empty bus stop. Just like he did with Ju Yong. He took her to the slaughterhouse where he then killed her with a guillotine. The next day, Su Hyun starts looking for Kyung Chol by visiting his parents' house, pretending to be an insurance agent. 
but it turns out that he no longer lives with them. Hyung Chol just left his son there to be cared for by his elderly parents and never came back. Luckily, Kyung Chol's son is at home right now, and it was through him that Soo Hyun finally got the information about where Kyung Chol lives. Without wasting any more time, Soo Hyun heads to Kyung Chol's house and sneaks into it. Kyung Chol isn't at home right now, but on the bright side, it allows him to freely search the place, where later he finds tons of bags and women's underwear. Not only that, he also finds a door that leads to the slaughter room, the place where Kyung Chol mutilated his victims all along. And while investigating the blood-soaked room, he finds Ju Yeon's engagement ring stuck in the sewer. With this, it's finally confirmed that Kyung Chol was the killer of his fiance. At the same time, the police, who are also investigating the Ju Yeon murder case, come to the place where Kyung Chol works as a school car driver. But unfortunately, they came too late. Kyung Chol just left to drop the kids home. Yes, Kyung Chol was not at home when Su Hyun came because he is currently at work, where he is in charge of taking the children home after school. This job is, of course, a dream job for a crazy psychopath like him. Sure enough, after dropping off all the children, he took the one remaining girl to a plantation, where he planned to kill her. However, before Kyung Chol could touch the girl, Su Hyun appeared in front of him. Thinking Su Hyun was just a cop who stupidly came alone, Kyung Chol tries to kill him. But here, it is Kyung Chol who is the fool. He dared to challenge a powerful intelligence agent, who of course could defeat him easily and even knock him unconscious. But when Su Hyun had the chance to kill Kyung Chol, he didn't, because he thought Kyung Chol must really suffer before he took his life. So, instead of smacking him in the head to kill him, he puts a tracking device and a mini microphone in Kyung Chol's mouth, and then breaks his hand. When Kyung Chol wakes up, he finds a wad of money in his chest, which Su Hyun had deliberately given so that he could use it for treatment. Su Hyun doesn't want him to die from his wounds because he still hasn't finished torturing him. Hyun Chol himself must be confused about what Su Hyun wants from him, but he doesn't worry too much about it, thinking Su Hyun is just a lunatic. And so, since he could no longer drive his car, he stopped a taxi that happened to be passing by. It turns out that there was already a passenger in the taxi, but the driver still offers Hyun Chol in, arguing that taxis rarely pass through the area. However, when he got into the taxi, he found the photo of the taxi driver was different from the person behind the wheel, making him suspect that the two people in the taxi were criminals who wanted to harm him. And so, before the two of them could do anything, Kyung Chol decided to kill them first. He repeatedly stabbed them as the car accelerated down the empty road. The car finally stops after hitting a tree, and at the same time, Kyung Chol has finished killing the two men. Sure enough, the two men are criminals who pretend to be a taxi driver and passenger as is evident when Kyung Chol opens the trunk of the car, where he finds the body of the real taxi driver tied up. But that doesn't bother Kyung Chol at all. He dumped the three bodies in the forest and then took the taxi to leave. When the sun is up, Kyung Chol visits a doctor at a clinic to treat his injuries. There's also a young girl working as a nurse at the clinic, which certainly makes Kyung Chol's sexual desire rise when he sees her. So, when the nurse was alone in the back room, he immediately took advantage of the opportunity to force her to serve his lecherous lust. Luckily, Su Hyun had previously implanted a mini microphone into Kyung Chol's mouth, allowing him to hear what Kyung Chol was saying through his device. So when he finds out Kyung Chol is about to harass the nurse, he rushes into the clinic and starts torturing Kyung Chol again. As if still not satisfied, he also cut his Achilles tendon, knocking him unconscious from the excruciating pain. When it gets dark, Kyung Chol finally wakes up in a terrible state in a deserted parking lot. But this time, he began to suspect why the madman kept finding him and torturing him. And most of all, he hated being toyed with like this, and he vowed to destroy anyone who dared to mess with him. Later that night, the taxi Kyung Chol was driving broke down in the middle of nowhere, forcing him to look for someone whose car he could steal. And not long after, he found the light of a car speeding from behind. So he hid the knife behind his clothes, got out of the car, and stopped his target. But this time, he was unlucky, because the car he was about to take turned out to be carrying a lot of soldiers. Reluctantly, he gave up his intention and asked the soldiers to give him a ride to where his friend was. Meanwhile, as he follows Kyung Chol from behind, Squad Chief John calls Su Hyun to let him know that the police are hunting for Kyung Chol. Because of that, and also because he's worried about Su Hyun, Jong asks him to stop chasing Kyung Chol and let the police take care of him. Not only Jong, Ju Yeon's younger sister, Se Yoon, also asks him to stop arguing that revenge won't bring Ju Yeon back to life. But Su Hyun refuses. He will still carry out his plan to torture Kyung Chol until he is satisfied. Back to Kyung Chol, he has now arrived at the place of his friend Taeju, a murderer and cannibal. There, he tells Taeju his situation, 
in which Taeju thinks that whoever is after him, he must be a family member of one of the women Kyung Chol killed. Hearing his theory, Kyung Chol can't help but think of Ju Yeon's engagement ring. It's possible that the madman hunting him is Ju Yeon's husband. But then, Taeju bursts out laughing, because he sees Kyung Chol and Soo Hyun's antics as funny. He even indirectly insulted Soo Hyun and his late fiance, making Soo Hyun furious. So, he gets out of the car and heads to Taeju's, intending to teach them a lesson. Fortunately, Soo Hyun arrived just as Taeju was about to kill a girl he was holding captive. Without another word, he chained Taeju's neck, tied his hands, and stabbed his right hand with a knife. But just before he cuts off his hand, Kyon Chol, hearing the commotion, bursts into the kitchen with a rifle in hand and shoots at him. But the shot misses, giving Soo Hyun a chance to escape upstairs. Kyon Chol and Taeju then split up to find him. But the decision ends up boomeranging on them, as it allows Soo Hyun to ambush both of them in turn and incapacitate them. After that, Soo Hyun calls the police so they can arrest Taeju, as well as his girlfriend who acted as accomplices in his heinous murders. But not with Kyung Chol. Instead of leaving him for the police to catch, he takes Kyung Chol to his hiding place to treat him, so that he can later release and torture him again. But there, Soo Hyun's friend, who was asked to help treat Kyung Chol, accidentally talks about the tracking device that was inserted into Kyung Chol's body. He even revealed a way to get rid of it, namely by defecating. All the talk about the tracking device is overheard by Kyung Chol, who pretends to sleep in front of Soo Hyun. After resting enough, Soo Hyun takes Kyung Chol to an abandoned tunnel and releases him there. Now that he knows how to get the tracking device out, he laughs happily as he challenges Soo Hyun, saying that he'll make him regret not killing him right away. He even told Soo Hyun that Ju Yeon was pregnant when he killed her. Of course, it makes Soo Hyun shock, because he had absolutely no idea that Ju Yeon was pregnant. While he reveals the fact to Soo Hyun, Kyung Chol enters a pharmacy. There, he killed the pharmacist and stole some laxative, which he then used to dispense a transmitter in a public restroom. Incidentally, after he found the transmitter in the pile of feces, a policeman with a stomach ache entered the toilet. Seeing the cop, he gets the idea to outwit Soo Hyun. The idea, of course, involved a violent act, namely by beating the policeman viciously. And then, after the cop passed out, he put the smelly transmitter in the poor cop's mouth. After that, as if nothing had happened, he then left the place by driving the police car. The tactic ended very well. Not long after, Soo Hyun arrives at the public restroom, only to find a policeman who has been beaten half to death. Now he has absolutely no idea where Kyung Chol went. Meanwhile, Kyung Chol unexpectedly calls Section Chief Oh, the man in charge of finding him. He tells Oh that he will turn himself into the police, of course after he ends his business with Soo Hyun. Soo Hyun himself is currently at the hospital where Taeju is being treated. He needs information, and the only person he can ask is Taeju, who being Kyung Chol's close friend can certainly understand Kyung Chol's thoughts. Sure enough, he knows what Kyung Chol's plans are. According to him, Kyung Chol is a vengeful person, and he will take revenge by killing Ju Yeon's family to make Soo Hyun suffer. Then, after he's done killing them, he'll turn himself into the police so that Soo Hyun can't kill him. Taeju narrates all the heinous plans while laughing happily, and it makes Soo Hyun furious. However, he was still generous. Knowing that Taeju likes to laugh and smile, he decides to help him smile forever by tearing his jaw. Knowing that Jong and Seiyun's lives are in danger, Soo Hyun rushes to their house. But he's late, because once he gets there, he finds Jong in a complete mess after being beaten by a dumbbell, while Seiyun has been murdered. Shortly after, Kyung Chol calls Soo Hyun to tell him that he will soon turn himself into the police. And as if that wasn't enough, he adds to the wound in Soo Hyun's heart by saying that in this game, he is the winner. Kyung Chol had already given the police a time and place where he would turn himself in. And so, at the appointed time, the police are already huddled around the scene, waiting for Kyung Chol to arrive. Turns out he wasn't lying, because moments later, a car stopped in the middle of the road. And as the driver gets out, the cops see Kyung Chol, covered in blood, raise his hand and wait for them to catch him. But this is the moment that Soo Hyun has been waiting for. He was already near the location without the knowledge of the police. And when he saw Kyung Chol raise his hand with a smug look on his face, he immediately drove the car at Kyung Chol and then kidnapped him away. He takes him to the place where it all started, which is the slaughter room at Kyung Chol's house. There, he tortured him for a while, before putting his neck on the guillotine. But then, he feels the torment isn't enough, and so he stabs Kyung Chol in the eye with a lit cigarette, then stabs him in the cheek with a screwdriver. Satisfied, he puts a rope in Kyung Chol's mouth, and hooks it to the door. He told him to hold it with his teeth, because if he let go, or if the door opened, the guillotine blade would slide down and slash his neck. After all that preparation, 
Su Hyun leaves, leaving Kyung Chol alone. Previously, he had called Kyung Chol's child and parents, asking them to come over there. Worried about Kyung Chol, the three of them rush to his house to check on him, and they arrive just as Su Hyun is gone. Of course, knowing their arrival, Kyung Chol immediately panicked. He repeatedly begged not to open the door, but his voice could not be heard clearly by them. They keep trying to open the door, and once the door opens, Kyung Chol can't hold the rope in his mouth anymore. The rope slipped, sending the knife above him sliding down and decapitating his head. His head then rolled right in front of his family who screamed in terror. Su Hyun hears everything that's going on in the slaughter room through his earphones. Knowing his arch enemy is dead, he stops walking and takes off his earphones. He thought for a moment before continuing on his way. But moments later, he burst into tears. And with that scene, this film finally came to an end. This extraordinary film teaches us that revenge is futile. It will not be able to revive the dead, and can even harm the people we care about. But what is more interesting to discuss is the theme it has. So, who is the real devil in this film? Is it Kyung Chol, the psychopath who lacks empathy and compassion? Or Su Hyun, the man who turned into a monster for revenge? Or the two of them? What do you think?